Today we are going to continue with inverse operations. Instead of addition and subtraction, we're going to be working on multiplication and division. Okay? Um, everybody should already be on page 631, and I already have the first equation on the board. Does anybody have any questions before we get started? All right. With inverse operations, you know that I have to do the opposite of what they do, right? Mm -hmm. So when you see the, the problem on the board, you see n over 4 equals 7. What does that n over 4 represent that I'm doing? What Division. operation? Divide. Divide. Yes, Davis. Division. Division. Uh, that is a fraction. It's nothing more than division, okay? So if I know that I'm working on inverse operations, what am I going to do to solve this problem? Tell. Multiplication. I'm going to do multiplication because that's the inverse operation. Now, boys, it's going to look a little bit differently than it did last week. Okay, you're not going to have um, 4 minus 4 equals 0. You remember in chapter 8 where we had to win a number over itself and we canceled that number out and you were left with the variable? That's what it's going to look like today. So if you don't remember, you need to play, pay close attention, okay? All right, so when I, if I know that this is dividing and I need to multiply in order to find my answer, I'm going to bring this down, all right, n over 4. Well, boys, what am I multiplying? Uh, Why do you think the 7? Okay, okay, so it's by itself. Last week, when I added and subtracted my number, what did it have to be with? The variable. The variable. What numbers with the variable? The four. four. So I need to use the 4, okay? So when I use the 4 and I know I'm multiplying... I have to multiply this fraction by 4. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other, other side. So 7 times 4. Now, before I can continue, can I take a fraction and multiply it by a whole number? No. No. What do I have to do with the 4 that's on the same side as the fraction? Lane. Um, you have to... The, number, the 4 is on the same side? This 4, what do I need to do with it? Put a 1 under it. Put a 1 under it. So now I can complete the equation. All right? So what is n times 4? 4n. Four 4n. Four four Just like it would be if you were using a parentheses. 4 times n would be 4n. Four okay? What about 4 times 1? Four. 4. 4. And now I have to do the other side. What is 7 times 4? 28. 28. Now, if you will, if you'll look where it says 4n over 4, you'll notice that I have a number that is alike. There's a 4 on top. There's a 4 on bottom. What do those two 4s do to each other, Turner? You mark them out, but you don't mark everything. Okay, but what, what is that called when I mark them out? It cancels, what, they, it cancels each other out. So I'm left with the n, aren't I? So I'm going to bring that n down. n equals 28, and I'm done. What do I need to do to make sure that that's done properly? Check, How, check. check my work. How do I check my work? Ooh. Andy. You divide by 28 by 4. So I'm going to plug in in. I'm going to plug the 28 in for in. All right. So when I do that, I have 28 over 4 equals 7. Well, boys, I shouldn't have to do any work here. You should be able to tell me that 28 divided by 4 is 7. Is that true? Yes, yes. ma'am. So I check my work. And it's right. I'm done. Questions about inverse operations at this point where I had to divide. They showed me I was dividing, and I have to do the opposite, which is to multiply. So just like the thing we just did... But, um, we it's the same thing that we did last week. It's yeah. just multiplication and division instead of adding, instead of adding and subtracting. But yeah. well, you still be doing the opposite, right? Yeah. Yes. Trey, you got a question? Um, how do you how do you get that fraction up there? How do I get what fraction? Okay. This one. I plug my answer in to this equation. So you mean that I just rewrote it using the let the number that they gave me when I solved it. So that, that I was just checking myself. 
So that n will not be in a check, and so you can't check it with just the variable. You will not have a variable when you check your work, no. Okay? Now, I want to leave this on the board, and I want to show you the next one. Okay? Yes, Jackson. Um, could, could there be two ways you could solve that? Okay, and how like, would your other way it. be? Like, yeah. Could you do like 4 times 7 would be 28? Well, you know that 4 times 7 is 28 because you did it right here. I know, but if you do 4 times 7, would it, would it work <laughs> every time if you did the bottom number times what it equals? I hope so. Because that, that's the only way you're, it's going to be, this, that's the only way it's going to work out to be equivalent. If you take these two numbers and get this one. Okay? All right, so look at B. B says 3Y. equals 18. <coughs> now, boys, this looks a little bit differently than this over here, doesn't it? Yes, what do you know that we're supposed to do when you have a number beside a variable? What does that mean? Multiply. It and means multiply. to multiply. So if I'm doing the inverse operation, what is the opposite of multiplication? Division. It's division. So division, to me, I could use the symbol of division, or, let me ask you this, could I just say 3y divided by 3 and 18 divided by 3? Doesn't that fraction identify that I'm dividing as well? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay? And that leaves less work for me to do in the end because I have a 3 over a 3. What, does I, what can I do when I have that? Break right, 1. Cancel it out. It cancels it out. I'm left with a y. Boys, what is 18 divided by 3? Six. 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 I'm done. Other than what? Checking my work. If I take this Y and plug it into my original equation, it's going to look like this. 3 times 6 equals 18. I put the parentheses there because if I just put 6 in for Y, it's going to look like 36. I have to separate them in some way. Is it 3 times 6, 18? Yes, ma'am. So is my equation equivalent on both sides yes, of the equal sign? Yes, ma'am. Questions? Yes, Turner. Well, I always have to put the parentheses or put the parentheses. You can, you can put a dot. You can put the sign of multiplication, whatever you're most comfortable with. Okay? Yes, Nick. Why did you put a 3 under 3Y? Because this means to multiply, and I had to do its opposite. The opposite is to divide. And it div I, I use the 3 because the 3 is on the same side of the variable. Just like over here, I use the 4 because it was on the same side of the variable. But it's, it's terrible. See, the, what did the 3 at the bottom come from? From right here. So you can write it down. Yeah. You have to use the number that is on the same side of the variable. You have to. You can't use another number. No. Yes, Chris. Well, from what I'm seeing, I thought, I thought whenever you were doing it, I thought that you actually had to multiply the, the division whenever you got done. You had to... Well, when I plug this in, I do. 3 times 6 is 18. Oh. That's how I check my work to make sure it's done properly. Okay? All right. Let's look at C. C is lovely decimals. Mm -hmm. And I know how much I love decimals. Mm -hmm. So let's do one of those. It's not hard. Just because it's a decimal does not mean anything. All right? All right, so when I look here and I'm looking at C, I have N over 4 and 3 tenths equals 9 and 4 tenths. So when I look at that, what operation are they using? How do you know? Because there's a fraction. Okay? So if they're using division, what am I going to use? Multiplication. I'm going to use multiplication. Yeah. Oh, you want, I'm sorry, Gage. I'm going to use multiplication because that's its opposite. So I need to bring this down and multiply. What am I multiplying by this time? I'm not multiplying by n. What number am I multiplying by? Four and four. Four and three tenths because it's on the same side as the variable. Okay? So I'm going to bring this down. Four, I'm sorry, n and 
4 and 3 tenths. I'm going to multiply by 4 and 3 tenths. And whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So I have 9 and 4 tenths times th 4 and 3 tenths. Okay? So now, what do I have to do before I can continue? What, when you look at what's on the board, what do I have to do before I continue? Mark out. I'll give you a hint. It's on the left-hand side of the equal sign. You have to cancel out. Well, in order to multiply, what do I need? Thank you. I need a one there. Okay, so now, what is N times 4 and 3 tenths? 4 and 3 tenths N. 4 and 3 tenths N. What's 4 and 3 tenths times 1? 4 and 3 tenths. 4 and 3 tenths. Okay? Boys, I have to multiply 9 and 4 tenths times 4 and 3 tenths. Should I do this side to side? No. No. I need to, no, I do not need to line up my decimals. I'm multiplying. They're going to line up, but not in my answer. Okay? What's 3 times 4? 12. What's 3 times 9? 27. Plus 1? 28. Okay, so I'm done with my 3. 1x, 1, 0. 4 times 4? 16. 16. 4 times 9? 36. Plus 1? 37. 37. When I add those together, I have 2, 14. I have 10 and 4. Boys, I have two numbers behind the decimal up top. How many are going to be in my answer? One. You mean decimal? There are two numbers behind the decimal in my work up top. So two numbers behind the decimal in my answer. So, four or 40 and 43 hundredths. What's going to happen to the um, side of the equal sign with the variable? It cancels each other out. You no longer have a four and three tenths on the top or the, or the bottom of that um, division sign. So, n equals 40 and 43 hundredths. How do I, what? How did you 42? 42. Look at the two. Huh, I'm sorry. I was looking up here. It is. That was my mistake for the day. Thank you for catching on. 42 hundredths. Yeah.